bigger than the game of soccer. We're growing the sport and it's going to be grown not just by winning soccer games, but how we are in the community, how we are giving back. Yes, the sport is important, but how we are as people is something that is, in my mind, in many ways more important. That is Jason Piscina, the new head coach of the U.S. Amputee Soccer Team, and this is Amputee Soccer Rising, a co-production of the American Amputee Soccer Association and Amplitude Magazine. This episode is sponsored by Autobach. Celebrate outstanding achievements in the spirit of sportsmanship at Autobach.com. I'm your host, Larry Borowski, the editor of Amplitude. And here's one thing to know about the new head coach of the U.S. National Amputee Soccer Team. He excels at playing the underdog. Five years ago, Pacina started a soccer program from scratch at Five Towns College, a tiny school located on Long Island that has fewer than 1,000 students. And within two years, Five Towns had reached the national title game in the U.S. Collegiate Athletic Association. Pacina had earned a National Coach of the Year trophy. It seems like the sort of mindset that's tailor-made for a group of adaptive athletes who are accustomed to being underestimated. Team USA hopes it's the right fit for a program that's trying to break into the upper echelon in global competition. I'm a big believer in inspiring others to make the impossible possible. At Five Towns, we didn't set uh, limitations to what we dreamed that first year. We thought we were going to make the national tournament and win a national championship. Now, we finished 9-4-1, which was a really strong season, beat the number one team in the country who went on to win a national championship. But we've never looked at, you know, kind of limiting what our success could be. Since then, we've been in the national tournament every year. We've been ranked in the top five every year. We went through a pandemic, too. So we played in 2019, didn't play in 2020. You know, we found out really who wanted to be a part of the program. I was holding kind of off-campus practices on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock, and we found out right away who loved the game, and it all led to making a national final. And the reason that success happens is hard work and holding yourself accountable and sacrificing for the the me for the week. It sounds really cliche, but when you have people holding each other accountable and you have people working hard every day toward a common goal, that's when you're going to be really successful, and that's What happened at Five Towns? Five Towns College isn't the only place the scene has helped people rise above expectations. And it might not even be the most important way he applies that skill. He has spent more than a decade as a special education teacher in New York City, working with students who face a variety of challenges, including disabilities such as autism and neurodivergence. I went to college to be a special education teacher on the elementary level. You know, after working at a private school for kids with autism, I ended up where my home has been for the past eight years, I believe now, in the New York City Board of Education. I work in Whitestone, New York. Um, I'm at JHS 194, which is a middle school, and I've taught a variety of grades. But currently right now, I am in eighth grade uh, science teacher in the ICT setting, and then I also teach eighth grade math. So that's my day job, but I love it. I, I work at a great school with great administration. We have great kids. My colleagues are the best. Teaching is always going to be a big part of my life, and I think it helps me as a coach because I think the best coaches are obviously the best teachers. They kind of go hand in hand. FGT Soccer has been on Facina's radar since 2019. That's when he got acquainted with Jim Franks, who coaches the New York Metro amputee soccer team. Both coaches were trying to build up new programs, and they'd occasionally get their teams together for drills, especially during the pandemic. The competition was suspended. Through Franks, Vecina got connected with Paige Palazzolo, the goalkeeper's coach for the U.S. National Amputee Soccer Team. So when the head coaching job unexpectedly opened up earlier this year, Vecina already had a pretty good idea of what he was getting into. When the national job came up, you know, I was approached by a couple of people that, you know, you should apply. But I said, you know, let me put my name in the ring, kind of see what happens. And one thing led to another. And then Eric called me, offered me the job. And I have a full docket. I have two little girls. I Again, I teach full time as well. And I'm assistant AD at the college level at Five Towns. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of hats. It was one of the things I did raise, you know, sort of a question in my mind. Do I have the time for this? And I just look at my life experience and I feel like it's the perfect fit for me personally. It piqued my interest just as an educator, looking at my skill sets and, you know, really taking a step back. It did attract me. To, be, to feel like this is something, hey, I can do. Also, it's an opportunity to coach on the international stage, obviously, which is a big opportunity from a small college coach. 
And then also, more, more importantly, when you dive into the team and the players that are on this team and how successful they are and what they've done in the past, I just feel like this program has the opportunity to be really successful over the next couple of years. And then, you know, felt like it was a family environment. And my whole coaching philosophy all goes back to creating a strong family bond. And I felt very much with the U.S. national team that that's something that, you know, they wanted to have in place. And I felt it aligned with what I believe with as a coach. In just a second, we'll find out what type of soccer tactics and strategies Coach Vecina wants to bring to Team USA. Before we do that, we want to thank Ottobach, who's sponsoring this month's episode of Amputee Soccer Rising. Ottobach has a long history of supporting elite amputee competitors, particularly in the Paralympics. For more than 30 years, Ottobach has passionately supported Paralympic athletes worldwide, offering essential technical services and equipment maintenance. From Seoul 1988 to Paris 2024, learn more about Ottobach's unwavering commitment to adaptive sports at Ottobach.com. Jason Fasina is taking the reins from Eric Lambert, who stepped down this winter after 10 years as head coach of the U.S. national team. Lambert resigned in part because he realized that to take the next step in the global arena, the team needed a more experienced soccer tactician, someone with a keener eye for talent evaluation and a more incisive toolkit for game planning and strategy. Fasina loves to geek out on all of that stuff, and he already has a few things he plans to change about Team USA's style of play. We have a team that actually has very high soccer IQ, probably higher than I expected it to be. I've watched video of their past games to kind of get an idea of how things are played, you know, and how things work. They have a will to win. They know the game. They are very skillful. They want to get better. They can keep possession, which is something that teams that coach at five towns, we love to have the ball at our feet and we love to keep the possession for most of the game. If we dominate possession, you dominate the game. I think we have the ability to do that. So I'm excited about that. I believe in building up from the back, playing wide, playing the ball, pivoting the ball in the middle, and then getting it to our target players and letting them you know, do what they do best, which is score goals. We really have some strong players on the back line that can do that for us and kind of build our attack from the back. I feel like we have some really, really good wingers that can take players on and be dynamic. And when you're able to beat one player in such a small side of game, it creates such a mismatch for teams. And I believe there's a few guys on the wing that really can be very dangerous for us and to get the ball up top and to finish. So, That's sort of the style in which I want to play. And then when we're out of possession, getting the ball back within 10 to 15 seconds. And to do that, you have to press really, really well. And how do you press well? You have to be really, really fit. The biggest thing I want them to really hone in on is uh, the idea of becoming really fit and being able to press, you know, for a full duration of the game. So that's like the one area that I think, you know, needs to sort of improve. But the skill is there to be really successful. Fasina has about four months to install the new system before Team USA's next international tournament, the Gold Cup, which kicks off in mid-September. Keep in mind that American amputee soccer is an amateur part-time activity, at least for now. Players have day jobs, they live in cities all over the country, and so a lot of the coaching and preparation has to take place at a distance. When it comes to hands-on, in-person practice involving the whole team, that four-month runway boils down to just a couple of weekends. There'll be a camp at the end of June, and there'll be a camp at the beginning of August. We're going to have a tryout camp first. We have to create a situation. We have 14 to 15 players that we can play. And even if they don't are the same ability level as the player in front of them, they can come in and spell and do a role for us. You know, that's what, you know, you look at the really good teams, and I've watched them film. They're able to sub guys in and get guys rest and stuff. It's very imperative that we're able to do that in the future competitions that we're in. So that's something we're really working on where we can get players 9 through 15 to play a role that helps us win as a whole. We're going to pick the team after the camp, and then we're going to bring the the team back August 2nd to the 4th, and we're going to have a national camp to prepare for the Gold Cup, which starts September 15th, which you say, okay, that's two camps. And that's kind of the timeline we have right now. We're going against teams that, you know, practice five, six days a week. Unfortunately for us, our national team is so spread out, we have to do a lot of work on our own. That's why the importance of the monthly Zoom calls and the daily tracking of our athletes running and putting that work in, it's it's so imperative right now. We are going to be doing some film review, which 
the current players are super excited about. We have the VEO camera and to kind of add a, 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 an extra level of evaluating player performance. So we've already broken down some old games and we're able to break those down and show them like the, how I want to play things that you know we should have done better things that we've already done well. So, so I'm a believer when video is helpful, but too much of something is also detrimental to me. Like there's still the natural feel of the game and understanding time and place. So I don't want my players to be robots. So that's the last thing I, you know, we want out of it, but we are going to implement it in, in regards to game review it's really awesome, but you can go down the rabbit hole. So I am very conscious as a coach of, you know, using it for its good, but not becoming reliant on it. How's Vecina going to stay busy in between those two training camps? Funny you should ask. Along with breaking down video, scouting opponents, meeting with assistant coaches, and connecting regularly with his players over Zoom, he'll be working to strengthen the amputee soccer ecosystem that feeds the national team. That effort might be more important to the program's long-term success than the two training sessions. Listen, when you're a head coach, you're like a CEO in regards to that. You have your hands in everything. 5% of your job is the actual coaching on the field. Everything from, you know, fundraising to apparel to growing the game regionally is also monitoring what new players we get in. Ideally, as time goes on, I will be speaking with the regional coaches, you know, more regularly, seeing what new players we have, what players we could possibly get into the national pool and see, you know, who would, who would help us build the best team we can to win an international competition. So the way I see it, creating these regional programs is the lifeline of the national team. So, you know, the more that we can get these regional regional teams to play, the better. The more game experience they get, they get the better. So that's how you create the national pool is knowing what players are really at that level. The scene is greatest mentor as a coach might surprise you. And we'll get to that in a moment. But first, another reminder that this month's episode of Amputee Soccer Rising is being sponsored by Autobot. It's time to gear up for Paris 2024 with Autobach. As the Paralympic Games return to Europe, Autobach is ready to support athletes with 24-hour technical service. Join them in the celebration of outstanding achievements and the spirit of sportsmanship at autobach.com. At the very top of this episode, you heard Jason Ficina explain that his definition of success goes beyond winning soccer games. It's also defined by a set of values that create success off the field both for the players and for the community they represent. That's particularly relevant for athletes in the disability community. Kelvin Jimenez described a similar perspective a few weeks ago in our debut episode. It was also important to the coach who Ficina considers his greatest mentor, Charlie Marquardt, the longtime head basketball coach at Tiny Malloy College. I had the opportunity for four years to work on Coach Marquardt's staff at Malloy College. He's been there for 30-plus years, and if you know anything about Malloy, it's a small Catholic school who, you know, they believe in leadership through service. I kind of call it like the small version of Notre Dame, how his players impacted in the community. And that's really important to me. And I, you know, when I took the job, what I did was I identified a few of the guys who I felt were leaders in the program or guys that I see as being part of a eventual leadership committee. And it was something that, you know, when speaking with the individual players, that absolutely came up. They're representing something bigger than themselves and they are such role models to people and it's conversations when I did speak with them one on one is where we've come from, like where it was, you know, a few years ago at the first time they went to a World Cup to where it is now and the regional teams and the growth of having more youth participate the participation. You know, that that's that's huge. You know, when we put on that um USA amputee soccer logo, like you gotta represent the highest values and doing things the right way. The scene is inheriting a group of players who already know how to notch wins in the community. They've been scoring those sorts of triumphs for years. Winning on the pitch against amputee soccer powerhouses such as Turkey, Angola, and Uzbekistan, that's a much taller order. It's the kind of thing that might keep a new coach awake with worry in the middle of the night. We asked Fasina what pops up in his nightmares. I think as a coach, you're always up at night anyway. You're always thinking about what you can do to make your team better. To me, I don't look at necessarily, and I respect all our opponents, but our job is to get our team as prepared as possible to play the best brand of soccer as they can play. We can play really tough against anybody. We can beat teams, but also if we don't play well, we will, we will struggle, which sounds pretty basic. And it's almost like a naive answer because to be fair, until you see someone live in person, you don't really know that level until you're there. So for us, it's we're worrying about how we can play the best brand of soccer as possible. If we do that, it will all work itself out. Okay, so no nightmares are keeping the new coach awake. 
On the contrary, Fasina says, it's actually the exact opposite, more of a pinch-me-I-must-be-dreaming situation. After all, it's not every day a guy from a small college that most soccer fans have never heard of gets the chance to head up a national program. Asina expects to win over the long haul. For now, win, lose, or draw, he's just thrilled to be on the sideline. I'm just so on cloud nine in regards to the fact that I'm going to be coaching a team at an international competition. It's not going to really hit until you know I hear the national anthem playing for the first time, and I think then I might get a little a little emotional to have that opportunity to now lead a team into you know a gold cup and possibly a world cup in 2026. And I couldn't even anticipate just sort of the other opportunities that have come out of this. You know, for me being in a place where you know I'm meeting the CEO and head of U.S. soccer. That's something that I could never, still I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. But at the end of the day, soccer, soccer. So I'm putting the ball in the net more times than the other team does. You know, it's it's how 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 do you keep the ball? How do you take advantage of your opportunities? And if you do, you take advantage of your opportunities, you're going to be successful. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks to Jason Piscina for sharing his views on life, education, and soccer. Final thank you to this episode's sponsor, Autobot. Celebrate outstanding achievements and the spirit of sportsmanship at Autobot.com. If you want to keep up with the U.S. amputee soccer team or find a place to play amputee soccer in your own community, visit usampsoccer.org. There's also a fundraiser this month for the U.S. women's amputee soccer team, which is traveling to Columbia later this year to compete in the first-ever Amputee Soccer Women's World Cup. You can find Amplitude online at livingwithamplitude.com. In next month's episode of Amputee Soccer Rising, we'll be introducing you to a grassroots amputee soccer club that got the chance to show a stadium full of Major League Soccer fans how the game is played on crutches. You've been listening to Amputee Soccer Rising, co-production of Amplitude Magazine and the American Amputee Soccer Association.